morning revolution. Good morning. Okay, welcome <clears throat> to Good Morning Revolution, Rosanna and Anita Good morning. and Michael. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Revolution. revolution. <laughs> That's right. I hope the sun is shining where you are because in New York it's been raining. Oh wow. The last day and a half. We got the the hurricane or whatever tropical storm mm. made Elsa. its way up to Elsa, yeah, made its way up the East Coast and it's been raining dogs and cats and cows and chickens. Mm. As long as it's not raining Republicans, I don't give a damn. <laughs> you know, like that. But, uh, well, it's been a big week. It's been a really big week and uh, we uh, want to talk about a lot of things this morning. Among them is uh, crime. Crime is in the news and, and the uh, 100th anniversary of the Communist Party of China is in the news. Uh, and oh, by the way, it's also the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party of, the, uh, of South Africa. That also, <laughs> we got two important anniversaries and so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, and Ohio, what is this law, uh, uh, Michael and Anita, about uh, you can, they allow you to discriminate against gay people and Muslims and well, anybody you want. What, I didn't hear about that. What happened? They, they, snuck, a, they, uh, the, they snuck one line or so into the uh, budget and it passed because our, our uh, you know, um, legislator, legislature is, is GOP dominated, super majority. And then DeWine did not uh, veto it. So from now on, doctors can choose um, to refuse service to anyone they, they want to refuse. What the hell's going on in the Buckeye State? I don't get it. I'm from there. I, you know, I don't know how I got so God darn a reactionary, Michael. I mean, it's a uh, shame. It's a shame. Now there are, I understand certain like uh, medical, I don't know if you call them chains or, you know, companies like Ohio Health, they cannot do that. You know, it's in their contract that they mm -hmm. can't, they cannot do that. My father happens to work for um, Ohio Health. And so it's good on, you know, on that. But, you know, a lot of these self-employed doctors or, you know, a lot of these um, like smaller companies or you know, they can, they can do, and it's not just on LGBT issues. It can be on religious. I think the, the correct wording, the, the exact wording is um, on moral grounds are allowed to refuse service or care to anyone on moral grounds. So, you know, if you don't like people with blue eyes or, you know, brown hair, you can say, oh no, I don't want to do it. Cause I don't, you know, believe that people should look like that or um, live like that. So it is a shame. Yes. And I think the majority oh, of Ohioans would not not agree with it. I don't think this is Ohio as a, as a state that's that's going this way. It's just really a small, you know, elite of uh, legislators in in the uh, legislation right legislature right now. It's the gerrymandering. It's the mm -hmm. gerrymandering. Had they not, you know, had if you look at a gerrymandering map, people should Google it. People who are listening, a gerrymandering map of Ohio. I showed it to some YCLers here in New York. They thought it was a joke. You know, how the poorest counties in Ohio swing up and engulf, you know, the wealthy suburbs of Columbus. It makes no sense. And that's why, you know, the legislature is like it is. Mm -hmm. that's oh, my why, goodness. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think, and, you know, it points back to the importance of voting and the importance of making sure that the legislatures, the reality is that legislatures make the rules. They're the ones who are, you know, shifting the lines. They're the ones who are making these laws. So we have to really get out there and vote. And not only that, but they're the ones trying to suppress the vote. So the vote is very important. You can't say that voting is not important. It's just super important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, they talk about making America great again, but <laughs> they're making it, they're going backwards in history, back to, you know, 19th century, Michael. I mean, in, in Spain, didn't they pass a new law uh, dealing with these issues? Yeah, quite. How, how is it that a country that was formerly ruled by Franco is now in advance of democracy of the good old USA? Somebody tell me. Yeah, quite, it's, it's quite the opposite in Spain. Um, as of last week, they passed something called the Trans Equality Law. And it was uh, basically, you know, anyone from the age of 16 and up can choose, you know, they're free, they're free to choose their identity, their gender and so forth. Um, and that's on top of, you know, the right to, for, for LGBTQ couples to adopt 
and to get married, which has existed since 2005. And the current leftist coalition government, the Socialist Party in coalition with the a now communist-led alliance called Unidas Podemos, you know, the United Left, they're able to, you know, implement these laws. And it's a shame that it's kind of been overshadowed, though. There was a, a murder of a young 24-year-old uh, gay nurse in Galicia uh, just two days after this law was passed. Um, he was kicked down the street 150 meters, they say, being called mm -hmm. a faggot. And um, it's almost as if Pride Month has been extended because people are still taking to the streets with their rainbow flags, their trans flags, and their you know, um, protesting against uh, th this, you know, hate, hate crime. Um, and so, you know, there's, it just shows you that, as you said, it's great that this progress has taken place in a country formerly ruled by fascists like Franco, but at the same time, the right-wing danger hasn't been defeated because it's still, you know, a threat. And there's um, right-wing members of their parliament um, saying things like, you know, if I had gay children, I sure wouldn't want grandchildren. And, you know, whatever gay people have isn't love, it's abnorm abnormality. And so you still have that. You still have it. You need a decisive defeat of the right wing. Yeah, we're still going to have it until they are decisively defeated. Not going to be decisively defeated until we have an anti-monopoly government on the direction of socialism. Anita, but we can't wait until then. I mean, uh, is the law being challenged? Uh, yes, it is being challenged, but it was, in fact, I went to a demonstration demanding that uh, DeWine actually uh, veto it before he failed to veto it. Uh, and I think all of those organizations are really united. Uh, NARAL, um, uh, Trans Ohio, a lot of uh, Planned Parenthood, just a lot of a coalition of organizations was on hand at the State House protesting uh, this rule and other rules that uh, that are included in the same budget, which include uh, real restrictions on uh, uh, reproductive rights in uh, in the state too. So it's more than just, and, and we're coming up to a governor's, uh, an election of a new governor next year. So um, I'm sure we'll be uh, trying, we'll be organizing on this, uh, on this point. Uh, in favor of some uh, change of government in, in long overdue in Ohio. Well, I hope the party speaks out loudly about it and uh, writes an article or a statement and, uh, and uh, we have to protest. We have to struggle for democracy for everybody with no exception. Speaking of speaking out, Rosanna, you went to Beijing last week and gave a big speech. Uh, how, how did it feel to be in <laughs> be on the, on the world stage <laughs> well it was uh it was really amazing to see so many uh, political parties uh i think uh close to 600 attended the virtual meeting mm -hmm. and at the very last minute we were told that uh president xi was was going to address the <clears throat> the meeting and actually he was from my from my uh, standpoint, it appears that he was there for the entire meeting, which lasted close to three hours, I believe, mm -hmm. or four, I can't remember, but, <clears throat> um, and, you know, he, he spoke about unity and that we're a global village and that we have to unite against, uh, uh, and, and we have to be united in some of the struggles to meet the people's needs for the well-being of the people, so. Um, I learned a lot about the different countries because the different countries uh, gave their presentations, and <clears throat> I think it's a it's a great opportunity to, if you get a chance to um, watch it on on YouTube, um, to see to hear about the different the situations that different countries are going through. It's a good perspective. Well, I heard that the uh, we I mean we we'll have to put the link up on the cpusa.org website, and we're glad you are there. And we know that you know we were well represented. And your speech is on the party website So anybody that wants to know what we said, and how we said, it and who said it, go take a look and listen. And you can read and listen to Rosanna, and uh, and uh, check it out. So. Um, so in addition to uh, China, there's other big international news. Uh, the, South, the party in South Africa 
uh, is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. They're going to have a big event. They had a virtual event. Happy birthday, SACP. It's one of Happy our, birthday. Happy one birthday. One of our great fraternal parties. Uh, uh, an alliance with the a ANC, a African National Congress, and the South African Congress of Trade Unions. That's what you call a united front, you know, mm -hmm. coming together around common uh, issues. And they've had their problems, but they're still together. They're still fighting. Uh, not so much with each other, but to eliminate the poverty in that country. Sadly, uh, but importantly, the president, former president Jacob Zuma, turned himself in yesterday. He's he's serving time in prison, Michael, because he refused to comply with the constitutional court demand that he testify in an inquiry into what they call state capture. And state capture occurs when the corporations grab hold of the state and take it over. Uh, so uh, he refused to testify because he was implicated in, in it, you know. So now he's he's serving a uh, a, a jail sentence, and so the National Democratic Revolution has ups and downs, and and uh, sometimes they happen both at the same time. And then also in the news, Haiti, Anita, Haiti, there was a coup. What happened? Well, there was a mur an assassin of the president or the, the, the sitting president. His term was actually over uh, in February, and he was planning to introduce some uh, constitutional amendments that would ex have extended his uh, term in office. He was a man with a whole lot of enemies and um, he uh, he had uh, he was implicated in gang violence and uh, gangs taking people's homes away from them, uh, gang killings. Nita as well. got a little stuck there. Excuse me. Well, we'll come back to it. Um, oh. Are you still there, Michael? Yeah, oh, Nita's back with us. Okay. No, I think you got stuck, Joe, because we heard we heard her. You heard me. Okay. Yeah. I'm the one that's stuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been feeling that way for the last few days. <laughs> a little, a little stuck. Yeah. Somebody come over here and unstick me, Michael. <laughs> you were in the same office. Um, so I read uh, a piece this morning, Anita. I don't know if the news verifies it, that there were criminal gangs. Exactly. That were dominating the presidency, seven or eight of them. Mm -hmm. Kind of a gangster government. Is that true? Yes, I think this is a, this is a problem in Haiti since 1915, when the United States first uh, uh, occupied uh, Haiti. Uh, the United States has certain financial interests in Haiti. They want to keep wages low, and any uh, anyone who uh, you know will uh, in, wants to be in government and has their own little fiefdom. Uh, can uh, can be propped up by the U.S. and the U.S. was propping up this particular uh, president as well at one point or another. But um, but it's 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 really something that is is the legacy of a, of a decade of uh, or a, a century of imperialism, um, and it, it's really not going to stop. It's just it's really in the country is in chaos right now. That poor country just. Uh... The country of Toussaint Louverture mm -hmm. and that great revolution that took place there, and and then what was the name of the president in the nineties? Uh, Aristide. Who, that was Aristide. Aristide, and he was he was basically the closest ha Haiti has gotten to a really democratically elected, um, you know, popular president. Um, and you might remember he was uh, he was removed um, from office. Uh, and by uh, the Bush administration in 2004. But even by yeah. then, he had already capitulated to um, the United States demands. Uh, it's, just, it's just difficult to be a leader in a Caribbean country and really take your country in an independent way and uh, really independent and fight back against uh, US capitalist interests. Um, and Aristide <clears throat> wasn't even able to do that, but he was still removed from office. I, 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 I think it's important for all of us here in the U.S. and for, as communists to study the processes, the process, you know, the, 
you know, we're often asked, why are we, why do we still fight the ultra right? Well, let's take a look at, you know, Haiti. The ultra right is constantly battling. You know, the people rise up and there's this whole propaganda that goes on. The battle of ideas is like thick. And, and so there's, there's, you know, the right isn't going to give up their, their power so easily, but it's, it's the working class consciousness that's going to, you know, uh, prevail. But I think it's important to study the process, not to criticize it, but to study the process of struggle that goes on in some of these countries. Uh, because there's also this idea that if, if uh, people are really, really poor and devastated, that they're going to rise up and take over. It doesn't happen automatically like that. It has to be organized. It has, you have to build consciousness. And so those kinds of things are really important to understand for our struggle here and, and struggles throughout the world. That was kind very, of- Very, very important uh, point. Go uh, ahead. I was gonna say what I kind of like from what I saw of the meeting that the Chinese party had with the world political parties, connecting it to South Africa, you know, United Front and also what happened in Haiti is they're kind of taking the approach of, yes, there's these communist parties that, you know, we meet with international meeting of communists and workers parties, but they were also reaching out to progressive um, and even, you know, social democratic, even some centrist political parties around the world to stand in solidarity, not only against the pandemic, but also against, you know, US imperialism. And I think that's really important. It reminds me, I think, to a conversation I've had with other, you know, veteran comrades um, who lived through the, the point in time when the Soviet Union was pushing for unity with you know socialist and social democratic parties against imperialism. You know you have to fight for that unity because, like Rosanna said, it's an ongoing struggle, and you're not going to win it alone. You're not going to win it alone. Absolutely. And speaking of crime, and it's been a crime in Haiti for the last Duvalier, Papa Doc, Baby Doc, his son, and. That right wing, Rosanna, you're right, all the way up through the day. And speaking of crimes, the right wing in the United States is making crime one of the big election issues for the midterm coming up uh, next year. <clears throat> crime is rising all over the country, New York, Columbus, Detroit, LA. And, and they say that the solution to it, uh, Rosanna, is more police. Hire more police, put them out in the street, scare people, get tough. Didn't we just do that in the 90s when they had three strikes, you're out, and they sentenced juveniles as adults? And it's like people have such a short memory, Rosanna. I, I don't understand. So, Rosanna is the solution more police in the street. No, clearly it's not. It, but it, you know, it, it is counter to the. <clears throat> it's trying to change the mindset of the American people away from you know the Black Lives Matter movement, the police brutality, the call for community control of the police, all of those things. That's what it's it's behind, and that's what you know. Again, it's that battle of ideas that we have to uh, clarify what's really behind these these. Uh, this rhetoric by the right uh, on you know the increase in crime, we don't really know if it's if it's even true. I mean, I think we need to look around our neighborhoods and things like that. But I think we we uh, we have to be very mindful of what is behind all of a sudden you know this high crime. When there was, I think maybe in less than two years ago, there was this whole call about how crime had come down less crime, less homicides, all of this. And then all of a sudden this huge rise, what's, what attributes it, what, you know? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. but I think it, you know, it goes back to trying to change the mindset of the American people to once again, finance police and, uh, and steer away from uh, community control of the police and police brutality, because it, it has suffered a blow. Mm -hmm. Is it crime in the streets, Anita, or crime in the suites? That's what I want to know. I, I crime think in the streets or crime in the suites? It, unfortunately, it's it's both those things, Joe. I think the, the homicide rate, Rosanna's right. If you look at the last like 
two and a half, three decades, the crime rate has gone down. But what people are talking about right now is real, a real rise in homicide. And I think there was a real rise in homicide during the pandemic and people thought, well, it would subside. I think there was just a lot of, lot more domestic violence during the pandemic when everyone was locked up at home. Um, it, was, uh, it was a difficult year, but then since the restrictions have been lifted, the homicide rate continues to be um, uh, high. And I think, um, but not as high as it was two and a half or three decades ago. And I think Biden um, and uh, his um, uh, Justice Department have come up with some uh, proposals um, and he did, he, there was publicized as in more police, but more police never get you a reduction. There's no way the homicide rate will be reduced just by having more police hired. That just doesn't make any sense. But there are ways, there are programs that can be instituted like summer youth programs and summer youth recreation uh, activities and, and, and investment in our youth that would really reduce um, the homicide rate. But isn't that and, kind of like putting a Band-Aid on cancer? I mean, isn't the problem, Michael, that a lot of the crime is related to drug wars, to the, yeah. to the drug epidemic, and the gang violence, I mean, in my hometown, so many young people, my nephew was killed two years ago, right in front of my father's house, directly drug related. You know, so I speak about this with passion because I have experience with it. There's so many young people getting killed and it's gang wars over who controls the drug trade. What's the solution, Michael? I think that we need to use our tax dollars instead of war, you know, dropping bombs on all these countries, spending trillions of dollars on the military budget, spend it on programs that keep people out of the streets, you know, not just young people. There's people, you know, in their 60s and 70s passing away from these kind of things, you know, from the from this uh, drug epidemic and, and from violence and so forth, you know, and I know here in New York City, they have certain programs and uh, certain hangouts, you know, to keep uh, young people, especially LGBT people of color out of the streets, um, you know, because a lot of people turn drugs here in New York City as a way of survival, drugs and sex and so forth. And so things can be done. It doesn't have to be this way. And so I agree with the analysis, you know, Band-Aid on cancer. Yeah. My solution, Rosanna, number one, jobs. Young people, old people need jobs. The reason that the crime rate had gone down over the last because people were working. Sometimes they had to work two and three jobs, but at least they could get a job. One job, give them a decent wage, give them something productive to do, they won't have to sell dope. Point number two, legalize all drugs. Absolutely. Take the profit out of it, put it in public hands, make it safe and cheap. I know that's controversial, but to me, unless you do that, unless you take the profit out of the drug trade, Rosanna, it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. Am yeah, I right I or wrong? No, I agree. I agree. You know, I totally agree. You 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 provide the basic needs that people uh, are hungry for, and and that stress them out. You know, if you're if you're not having a livable wage or a wage period. Your children need health care, but you don't have the ability to give them that health care. They'd like to have an education, but you don't have the ability to do that. As a parent, you're going to be stressed out. And all of that kind of, you know, stress and anger and all of that can turn into violence as well. So I think meeting the basic needs of people is, is the best solution to fight crime as opposed to more police that doesn't stop it it just fills our jails with with uh our people mm -hmm. and can um, i add something joe uh having uh you know legalizing drugs and taking the profit out of drugs would also mean something in that international stage too people like moisey in in haiti uh who are making money off of the drug trafficking uh you know they would be out of business so it would really change things in the international situation as well as uh, as what we experience here in this country. And you'll have the last word. Thank you. So break it all up. 
you know, and put it in the people's hands, <laughs> you know, and tell all of these politicians to stop talking out of their neck and start telling the truth about, I, I could go on, but we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Stay strong. Stay safe. Stay in the fight. Take care. Bye, everybody. everyone. Bye. Bye.